From the beginning, SANS has been a mission-driven organization. We want to make the world a safer place. At SANS, we've always had this focus on empowering cybersecurity professionals with the real-world, practical skills they need. Our courses, certifications, cyber ranges, college, scholarship programs, community resources, they all maintain the highest standards in the cybersecurity training and certification community. And as a teacher, as a mentor, it's so rewarding to have that role in making it happen. You'll get more value from a SANS class than any other training course easily. Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Nehart. I am the Director of Content Marketing here at the Sands Institute. We are coming to you live on the floor of the RCA Conference. Uh, we're in booth 3416. If you're attending the conference, we invite you to come on over and say hello. Uh, we'd love to meet you and learn more about what brings you to RCA and what you're enjoying from this year's conference. Uh, listen, we are streaming across or SANS, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter channels, and sharing uh, with our community around the world the dynamic of voices within the SANS community. Um, and so I invite you, scan the QR code on the screen, or click the link that you see in the comments right now. It'll bring you to our landing page and show you the schedule of all the live broadcasts that we have happening this week. Uh, there have been some really amazing conversations that you wanna go back and uh, maybe save uh, to your YouTube playlist, right? And check out, we've had conversations with the likes of Rob Lee and Karen yeah. Evans, and uh, we have the amazing Jeff McJunkin here with us right now. Uh, and, and Karen, um, Katie Nichols is gonna be joining us uh, shortly after to, to wrap up today, and we have a couple more tomorrow. So go over to that landing page, you have the ability uh, if, if you're interested in any of the remaining live broadcasts, to set a notification so that you're, you're made aware when we go live. Um, I am so very excited to be sharing uh, some, some time right now with Jeff McJunkin. He's the founder of Rogue Valley Information Security, a consulting firm specializing in penetration testing and red team engagements. This is somebody who have had the pleasure <laughs> personally, I was joking with him earlier, I don't, I've never seen somebody in uh, presentation mode with as much energy. <laughs> and so I am so very excited to, to chat with you for a little bit today. I'm glad to join. For many in the community, we know who you are, but for those who are maybe watching this and, and seeing Sands uh, for the first time, seeing you for the first time, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Sure, absolutely. So uh, I, I have a background that I'm sure has been seen many times throughout this conference of coming from the operations world, coming from the systems administrator days. In my heart of hearts, I still feel like a sysadmin sometimes. But I wanted to, to keep going a little bit further, advance beyond what I could do there. I actually started taking classes uh, for SANS, doing things like net wars in the evening, and a little, got a little bit more offensive over time, as many of us do, getting more offensive over time. Uh, starting to get a little bit more into the penetration testing side of the house, uh, doing a little bit more consulting. Eventually uh, started working for first a pen test consulting firm, then Counterhack, where they make core net wars. I got yeah. to make a few versions there. And uh, since moved on to, yes, my own company, where I do pen test, red team engagements, incident response. So I try to run the gamut, offense, defense, some forensics. Uh, so I, I, if I have one bias, it's that every field within IT, every specialty within IT, 
helps every specialty, helps every field yes. within IT. You're yes. a better defender if you're a better attacker. You're a better uh, forensicator if you understand the attack mindset and yeah. then vice versa, right? All of these things go well together. Jeff, how long have you been in the SANS ecosystem? Uh, I was just looking at this recently because I just made a uh, principal. Uh, Congratulations <laughs> yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've been in the SANS ecosystem, I think I've had every role in the classroom for something like 12 years now. Wow. I've, I've, I've been student, moderator, uh, facilitator, TA, uh, instructor, co-teacher, like all of the things other than staff. So maybe I'll get that one eventually at some yeah. point. <laughs> That's awesome. And so we're talking uh, about net wars uh, today. Um, how, how, how did it end up, wind up here uh, on day two? Oh, uh, day two was fantastic. I, we were over at the RSAC sandbox. Okay. And it's, it's, it's one of my very favorite sections of RSA. It's where you actually get to get your hands on keyboards. There's all sorts of villages. We have the aerospace village, ICS village, AppSec village. We have, of course, uh, kind of the, the hands-on learning area where we had NetWars. Yeah. There are other CTFs there as well. But NetWars is a very special place in my heart. There, there are some things that we do there that I will sh talk about here shortly that I, I don't see in other CTFs. And I, I feel like they're pretty strong differentiators that just makes gives me the warm fuzzies every time I get to, to run a NetWars event. Yeah, I love it. Uh, did we name any winners? I did, yes. So uh, we had a, a few dozen people playing and really enjoyed. Uh, we had a challenge coins for the, the top five. We'll have invitations to the SANS Tournament of Champions. Oh, nice. Happening in, in DC. In December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's in uh, SANS uh, CDI. Right. But gosh, that room. That room is just amazing every year. Yes. I, I, I think out of all the tournament champions, I've missed one out of like the seven that have happened. I've been in CDI so often, but yeah, there, there's been a thing happening for a bit. <laughs> I missed one, but I, I argue that that room has more collective IT security talent, like 300 plus people, all prior winners of Net Wars tournaments. That room has more collective cybersecurity talent than many countries. Yeah. I will stand by that. Wow. It wow. is amazing. It is an honor to be in that room. Wow. Question for you. Do, you. do you create any of the challenges for NetWars? Yes. So uh, I, I had the, the honor of uh, leading Core NetWars version 4 and version 5 and being a little bit involved as I was on my way out in version 6 and still influencing 7 and 8 now with okay. uh, question recommendations and hints and such. And Got it. Challenge design is its own little microcosm, and I love it. Uh, there, uh, going back to some of the things that we, I pretty much only see in core net wars, and to some extent the other net wars as well. Little things like, if you see a question, you should be able to answer that question. That's actually not a thing in many other CTFs. Sometimes there's dependencies that they just don't reveal. Also, having hints and making hints not an adversarial aspect. I've seen too many other CTFs where, well, if you raise a hand, we're going to tell you to read the <coughs> fine manual. <laughs> no, we want people to learn. We want people to have fun. Yeah. And yes, there's sometimes a bit of a competition, the tournament of champions. But we want it to be a learning experience. We want it to be fun. There's always some balance between learning and competition, but we cheat. We do both because early on, there's hints available for whatever you want to learn. If yeah. you take the hints, you want to just maximize your learning, that's fine. The trick is eventually those hints peter out. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to hint your way to the win, which I mean, I've seen kind of both ways. I saw a CTF today where there are no hints. They actively made fun of you, making sound effects if you asked the wrong question. Mm. I've also seen where there are hints. But the questions just walk you through, start to finish the entire CTF, so it's who can copy paste the fastest. And I, I don't like either one of those. Yeah. Right? I do want there to be some challenges that force you to know what to do. And that's, that gets back to another foundational philosophy on the NetWars side, that you should always know what you want to do when you see the challenge. It's OK if you don't know how to accomplish that challenge. Uh -huh. right? That's where the hints come in. That's where Googling comes in. That's yeah. where raising a hand, asking others, asking friends, that's all fine. But you should always know what the challenge is requiring of you. Mm. Uh, that gets back to just, just challenge design things that I, I've seen as a player in other CTFs that bother me so much that I try. I've seen it, look, it pops up within networks every now and then, and we smash it right down. Yeah. This shall not pass, right? Yeah, we Gandalf yeah. the heck out of those problems. 
like as you're talking i'm wondering you know what does like how much time goes into the design process of all this yeah, so, so uh, each version of NetWars, the, the goal is they last around a year. Because at some wow. point, we want to rotate to prior uh, to, to new versions. Right. However, it's also fine that people do the same version multiple times. Because the goal is not to compare me to you, or you to someone else, or certainly any one of us to a team of players. Right. The goal is to compare you to prior you. Ah. So you quickly come up to where you were before, and you advance further if you right. play the same version again. So that's totally fine. Yeah. That said, we want to rotate periodically, have the latest vulnerabilities in there. Uh, to, to more pointedly answer your question, the uh, design aspect tends to be several months of right. a dedicated person just building out the flow. Right? Where are questions going to go? What are going to be the groups of questions? What are going to be the multiple paths, not yeah. just one path, right. through the different sets of challenges? One thing that's unusual about the core net wars as opposed to and pick on them a little bit, things like digital forensics networks, uh, where you have, instead of offline assets that you download and answer questions, we have live targets. Yeah. So we have dependencies on those live targets, and mm. we want to not <clears throat> have a path fail. So we want multiple paths through. Different approaches are completely fine as well. Got it. Wow. So for those, I mean, there, there's so much that you just shared there, <laughs> right? Um, We've wrapped up here, but like for those who are maybe watching this and they're like, what is Net Wars? Like, <laughs> I, and Carlos was here yesterday. He talked a good bit about Cyber Ranges, but um, want to share anything else about Net Wars and Cyber Ranges? Yes. No matter your area within IT, no matter your area within information security, there are always more things to learn. My goal when teaching when running net wars, when building challenges, I mean, as a consultant as well, I want to be a catalyst for ongoing change. Mm. There is always more to learn. Yeah. Life is full of interesting questions. Yeah. Sure, build out your own lab and you can answer some of, those own, of your own questions, but also take advantage of there are many CTFs out there and there's always something to learn. So we want to build an environment that you can have fun, and learn and get more hands-on skills in areas that you haven't dealt with before. When you when you see somebody's eyes light up as they as they crack that hash, as they Kerberos for the full, first time, as they do a golden ticket attack, as they do log 4J or Heartbleed or Shell Shock with prior Sans holiday hack challenges, it's all opportunities to learn and lower that barrier to your ongoing learning. Right. Because ongoing learning is not something you do for six days or two days. Learning is an ongoing process, and sometimes you can have somebody kickstart that process, yeah. but it should never stop. Right. And Net Wars and many of the cyber ranges are our goals to kickstart your ongoing learning, right? If you're accelerating in the right direction, your position shortly won't matter. Yeah. Just make sure you're accelerating in the right direction, accelerating that learning, accelerating your knowledge. That's what cyber ranges and Net Wars is all about. I love it. Thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. I love your energy, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me join. This has been fun. <laughs> I appreciate it. Listen, we have one more live broadcast today with Katie Nichols, fresh off the stage, having delivered the keynote today. Uh, so please, go grab something to drink. But go ahead, scan that QR code right now or click the link in the comments below. Uh, it will take you to a landing page where you can go ahead and tap that set a reminder so that you're notified when we're going live in about 30 minutes or so, right? And, and so adding just one more endorsement, Katie Nichols is amazing. Amazing. I, I was just hearing uh, Ed and Johannes talk about how she required them to up their game because she did so amazing last prior year at the, the keynote as yes. well. But Katie is fantastic. You all are in for a treat. So uh, we'll see you here in about 30 minutes or so. Thank you so much for watching. From the beginning, SANS has been a mission-driven organization 
We want to make the world a safer place. That's one of the reasons why so many incredibly talented, highly respected security experts have wound up teaching here. The instructors you find in the classroom are not only renowned security practitioners, but they also excel in mentoring. At SANS, we've always had this focus on empowering cybersecurity professionals with the real world practical skills they need, not just to evolve and grow in their careers, but ultimately develop expertise that's going to help change the world. It's made me more excited about being in cybersecurity uh, just because there is so much going on. And so, you know, getting connected and understanding, you know, just kind of, um, you know, what, what's new and what's out there, um, that's what SANS brings, and that's awesome. Our courses, certifications, cyber ranges, college scholarship programs, community resources, they all maintain the highest standards in the cybersecurity training and certification community. At SANS, you're surrounded by a network of cybersecurity experts who help you learn. We want to help you solve a problem and teach you the skills to solve your future problems. And we're really proud of the community we've created, which has practitioners from around the globe coming together to share knowledge, to stay at the cutting edge of adversary tactics and defense techniques. If you're considering taking your first SANS course, just do it. I don't know how else to say it other than just do it. I was super nervous when I took my first. I did not know what to expect. But when you come here, it doesn't matter what level you are from beginner to intermediate to advanced to expert. I'm going to say you're going to pick up on something from either the instructors or the students because the level of expertise and the level of education that you get here, you cannot get anywhere else. SAN students are learning the skills they need to change the world. To make the world a safer place. And as a teacher, as a mentor, it's so rewarding to have that role in making it happen. You'll get more value from a SANS class than any other training course easily.